Hello everyone, this is Mr. Robert Ronan here, and today I'm here for my breakdown on Denki Kaminari. Um, overall, Kaminari's playstyle, I would say, is somewhat of a setup, zona, and ironically for Kaminari, he's quite a thought-out character. You have to think what you're doing, and play smartly, which... <laughs> I mean, judging by his character in the anime and the manga, that I find that pretty ironic, that he's one of the more in-depth thoughtful characters, but whatever, let's get into his buttons. He's really fun, so. His regular attack string is this three-hitting attack string. You can dash cancel after any point if you want to get combos that way, and as you can see, his air attack string is practically the same thing, except in the air, three hits, ending with a kick, and you can dash cancel. And it can also lead to a worse flat, the air one. Okay. His yellow attack is a three-hitting attack that um, you can combo into and out of. Uh, you can combo into it from his attack string, and you can cancel into other quirk buttons uh, to extend combos. Or you can just dash cancel after it uh, to get combos that way. Uh, for some wacky stuff like that. In the air, it's this uh, splat right there in the air. They get splatted to the ground. It's from one hit there in the air still. And but you can also cancel it into other buttons. So if I do two hits into it, I can cancel into his tilt part two and stuff. So they can be cancelled into and out of, which is why they're gonna be in most of his combos a lot of the time. Because <laughs> they're good combo extenders and they add damage. His red attack is really good. It's quite fast, it's a little bit faster than some other red attacks, and it has a, I would say above average range. It can reach from like about here. Maybe a bit under. But it's really good, that's why I have my Bakugo support. So you can do these unblockable setups a lot. And get lots of easy damage that way. And yeah, it's a good red attack. You use it in his mix ups, it's really good. Especially when he's in his charge state, which we'll get to later. It, it gets really crazy and people can't tell. You can use it as a little bit of mix up to it. Okay, getting into his quirk buttons. His quirk one is this projectile that he shoots and they stay on the screen. Now that was a really bad demonstration. So, if I just tap the button and I'm over here, it'll just shoot it a little bit forwards and it'll just stay there. If I hold the button, it'll keep going until it reaches the opponent or it just reaches the wall. Oops, 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 spoilers. Um, so yeah, you hold it down and it'll go further. And reach the opponent. You can also tilt it to make it go sideways to the left or the right of the opponent if you want to try and set it up. And as you can see, when you put three down, it makes a whole triangle. So I put one down, I put two down, and then they make a line. And then I can put a third down, and it'll complete the triangle. So you could, it's a really interesting move. So you can make all. Wow, uh, rude. So you can make these traps that cover huge areas of the screen if you place them correctly. They can cover like almost the whole map and make this entire like ring of electricity, and it can be really scary for your opponent. So you want to make sure, and you can also place them like three-dimensionally, like in the air, to make these really weird high like combo. I mean, screen-covering triangles of electricity, and if the opponent walks into them, you get a full combo. They can also be used for some interesting combos, so if I have two of them on the screen, like I do now, if I do two hits into it, it'll stun the opponent, and you can use that to extend its combos even further and get really good damage that way. But yeah, basically, they're a really interesting zoning tool. You can just use it as a normal projectile if you want, you know, just keep zapping the opponent. But I like to use it as a cool setup tool and make sure you're making these like huge triangle beams of electricity because it's really useful and it's, it can be really powerful. And as you saw before, if I hold down the button, he can charge it. So you saw him turn blue there, that's the indication that he's charged it. And if you press it then, then it does three at a time. So, oops. Ah, get off the screen. And you can charge like while he's in other animations, to so see. Okay, maybe you can't. Oh yeah, yeah, see, he had charged it while I was doing that other thing, and then he puts out two at a time. So after you put one out, just hold the button down, and then you can put down the rest, like, instantly. And it's a really good way of, like, easily getting combo. Oops. Ooh. There's some spoilers from other 
other stuff about him. But yeah. When you have the charge version, it's an automatic combo. You don't need to even have others on, and it makes... It's the main way he's gonna get decent damage. But yeah, and it's also really good setup, spacing, and zoning to it. Now, I spent a lot of time on that one button, but it's very important for him. It, it's, it's really complex and really cool. Okay, now for his quirk 2. It's this electrocution move. On it, if you just tap it, it doesn't seem like it does much, but if you hold it, you hold down, and then release it with a high damaging blast. And as you can see now, this is a... Uh, it's a property I'll get into now, since he gets into it using this move a lot. He charges with electricity the more um, quirk buttons he uses in the game. And if you use too many, he will go into his yay mode, I guess you can call it, where he just stands there for a bit and the opponent can come up and punish you for it. So you want to make sure you're ready for that, you can have supports or something. But basically he gets stronger with the increased charges because his special moves have different properties. So I'll quickly cover the Quirk, quirk 2 and quirk, Tilt Quirk 2 before I get into all the changes he has. So the Quirk 2 can also be used as a reset. First two hits and then he lands on the ground and then he can go in for a red attack and reset the opponent that way. I find it really good there. Or if I'm high in the air, I can use that as a sort of reset tool that way. But obviously it's also just a really damaging combo ender if you want to use it this way. And it gets him into his charge really quick. Usually you have to do a bunch of his other special moves, but if you do this one he's automatically in his charge state. And in his charge state, when you press the Quirk 2 button, it'll just release this massive impulse instantly. It doesn't have the slow startup that it usually has. And you can hold it down to make it last longer, but he'll obviously discharge and go into yay mode if you hold it for too long. Um, the first hit of this, as you can see, doesn't actually hit the opponent. So it, it just does like damage, kind of like they have armor. So they're not going to be hit until the second part of it, where they get electrocuted here. So, yeah, just take that to note, it's not really something that you use on block or anything, it has a lot of gaps, they can just mash the button and they'll go through it. Um, yeah, and his Tilt Quirk 2 is this 4-hitting move where he, I don't know, just goes like, oh, electricity and then charge. And you can dash cancel after it, and it does really decent damage, and you can use it in most of your combos. You can combo off of it after his Tilt Quirk, um, his armor attack in the air which is what you're going to do in most of your combos. And also this whole succession leaves the opponent on the ground, so you can use it for reset. And it's also really good for resets in the air, so you can use it a lot. So if, I, if we're high in the air, say I've done a big combo, and I've ended in this, the opponent recovers, I go into it again. Oh, and I mess up, obviously. The opponent recovers. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And basically, yeah, you use it as a, this weird reset tool to catch the opponent if they're trying to recover. So you scare the opponent into not wanting to recover. And it's really good for just scaring the opponent in the air and making them not recover, and that allows you to do even some cool combos if they're not recovering. Okay. So, now that we've covered all of his quirk buttons, we can cover how he changes when he's in charge mode. So, when he's in charge mode, when you do his quirk 1, he does 3 automatically, which is really crazy. So he just aut automatically puts out the whole triangle on the screen, like with one press of the button, which is I find ridiculous. So if they walk into that accidentally, all of a sudden, there's this massive triangle on the screen, like just from your quick projectile. Also, something I forgot to mention about his um, quirk one is that it's safe on block, so you can use that to end only of your buttons, and your opponent can't punish you. It's really good. Okay, so back into the charged analysis. Um, we went over what the quirk two does. It just is a big release, a really quick move that's safe on block when he's charged, and his tilt quirk two is this move that lets you, the opponent uh, keeps them standing. And he charges again, like, and it does a bit more damage. And the main part is that it leaves him standing, so that you can go in for. Oops, if you don't <laughs> go into yay mode. If you do some attacks, it keeps him standing. So you can go in for a reset. You can go in for that. You can go in for a red attack. 
basically it's just really scary for your opponent because you're not gonna you don't have to let them drop. Um, also as you saw, his regular attack string has a lot more hits, and the last hit has like a big multi-hit effect. So make sure you cancel after the last hit. And he gets really easy big damage when he's in this mode for like one dash cancel. And obviously you get more damage when you cancel into your plus ultra one. And yeah. The only way to safely escape the A mode is by doing his level 2 plus ultra. Just letting you know. So if you're charged up and you're like, oh no, I don't want to go into the like yay mode, you can just end a combo with plus ultra 2 and you'll be back into regular Denki mode. So, that is all of Denki's buttons. Oh, and his plus ultra is a really good move. It has a huge hitbox. Like, it goes above him, behind him, around him in this massive dome, and it can be comboed up with, oh, if you don't fail like I do. But we'll get to that in the combo segment. Now that we're done with his buttons, we can get into Denki's combos. So combo-wise, Denki is a bit of a situational monster, he has to do different combos depending on how the opponent is. But nonetheless, a basic bread and butter combo that you're going to be doing with Denki most of the time is two hits, into armor move, into tilt quirk 2. Oops, I didn't do the last hit. There we go. It's low damage, uh, you, you see 7400 damage, but it's really good because it has set up um, one of your charged electricity bowl things. So that's two hits into Ama move, into Tilt Quirk 2 dash cancel, Ama move, Tilt Quirk 2, into Quirk 1. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so it's a little bit damage, but it gets one of the bulls out. If you leap out the, um, uh, the quirk 1 at the end, you can actually go into a reset after the quirk 2. If the opponent recovers, just attack again, and then you get to go in for a full combo afterwards as a proper reset, and it'll do full damage afterwards. Because they recovered, so the combo has been fully reset, damage is reset, and yeah, it's a really good tool, you can use it for resets. A lot of the time I like going for setups, but the reset is also really good, and I... Yeah, if the setups don't seem to be working with my opponent, I usually go for the reset, just to get a lot of damage. Because if you get, like, a, a reset into a combo, that's a lot of damage, like, really quick. You can get an easy, like, it'll probably be, like, 18, 20,000 damage. Oh my goodness, what? If you don't mess up. But yeah, you can do more uh, extended combos than that, but I find that's a really good way of catching your opponent in, in the air, and then that's going to do an easy 20,000 damage just because you caught them with the recovery reset. Okay, so now, there's two ways that Denki can have even more damaging extended combos, and that is if you have two of his electricity balls on the screen, and if you do two hits into Tilt Quirk 2, into Quirk 1 again, it will stun the opponent. And then you can go into the regular combo from there. So I have two out, two attacks, into Tilt Quirk 2, into Quirk 1, and back into this again. And then that did a lot more damage that time, 10,000 damage. So this is where the first time that combo that I showed before, the 7,500 damage one, is worth it because you've gotten a ball out. And if you do another ball, and then another quirk one ball, then if you get another hit, then you're gonna get an easy 10,000 damage. So it makes up for the low damage he did at first, because you get high damage later. And you get to set up another ball from the extended one. Um, also, if he has the charged quirk one active, it doesn't matter how many are on the screen, you do two hits into it, and it'll be an automatic combo starter. So say if I have just one over there, and I've held the button down, and I've got my charged quirk one, I can do two hits into quirk one, and then it's a full combo starter. Oh my goodness. 
And sometimes it meteor blows, sometimes it doesn't, but you still get the... As long as you get the electricity ball out, it's worth it. Because you can go for resets like I did just then. You can go for setups and wake up. The opponent meteor blows, just make sure you do the quirk one and you have your electricity ball. It's really important to Kaminari. Just make sure you have it out. It can be anywhere. It can be used for a setup or a reset. Just make sure it's there. It can be used to extend combos even. And obviously, with this like rounded combo is the best way he's going to go into his plus ultra one because that does a lot of damage and it didn't cost any uh, meter except for the plus ultra one so there was no dash cancels or anything. Um, so once you have his charged quirk one, you get a lot of damage even if you use it at the end of your combo. Actually, no, you don't. Never mind. Yeah, so you're always going to want to use it at the start because that's when it'll keep your opponent stunned on the ground. And you can get easy, easy damage that way. Okay, as I was talking about before, Kaminari is a bit of a reset monster. So in the air, if I do two hits into armor move, into um, Tilt Quirk 2, and if I've done a combo, so I'm a bit in the air, I can just mash the attack button and it'll, it almost guarantees a reset if the opponent recovers. There's no frames for them to be able to do an armor move or anything, so if you time it right, it's like a proper reset. Oh my goodness. And yeah, you have to be a bit in the air so that you both don't land. And you can go into whatever. Try and get a wall slide set up. Or something. So basically you can just be a real nuisance in the air. Do his large work too. But yeah, you can really keep the opponent in the air for a long time after you do his tilt work too. It's a, it's a really rude way of resetting. Um, also you can end your combo in is Quirk 2, and then go for a reset. And get some damage that way. Um, that wasn't a connected combo, I dropped it somehow. But that's a sneaky way of getting extra damage from your combos, because your opponent isn't probably going to expect a red attack randomly in the middle. If I cannot consistently mess up my combos. And if you press it fast enough, you'll be in the air, and then maybe you'll get a wolf splat or whatever. So yeah, he's really good at resets and setting up the opponent to get in a worse situation than they were in the first place. So yeah, but you're always going to be doing armor attack into tilt quirk 2, because that does a lot of damage. Armor attack into tilt quirk 2, and either end it by going into the ball, or by trying to go into a reset, by just attacking again, and then going for the reset, oh, and then going for the ball. Oh, see, look, that even comboed there because he was beside the wall. So yeah, you always want to make sure you're thinking about whether you want to go for the setups with the quirk 1, for the reset using the tilt quirk 2, and what's going to be more worthwhile. And like, try and feel out your opponent, see what they're falling for. Are they falling for the resets? Because keep doing resets then. Do they, the setups not working? Do the reset. The setups are working well, keep doing the setups. And, oh, I have two bulls out, so now I can go for a super easy combo. And do tons of damage really easily, even meterlessly if I wanted to. Um, if he has the charged quirk one, he can get some decent damage. Oopsie. For no dash cancels, and I could have put a, an orb out there as well. And then, you know, you're just always setting up, thinking about your resets, thinking about how to get the most damage and what's your opponent falling for. And all of this is just on top of his, like, like you're running around and zoning and calling out your Bakugo support or your Jiro support or whatever you have and doing your red attack while it hits because it's a really good red attack and then going in for your combos, your resets or whatever you decide to do 
He's just a really oppressive character. You always have to be thinking about what you're doing because to make sure you maximize whatever you're doing. Like here, I can go in for an extended combo by doing that because I know I was going to knock him into the, into the beam. He's just really strong. And he's a really, like, thoughtful, like, setup character, which is not what I expected with Kaminari. <laughs> but he's really fun, and I've played it quite a few ranked sets with him, and he definitely makes an impression on the opponent, because he's just so strong. Yeah, he has resets, damage, setups, and he can combo off of his plus ultra attack. Um, Disclaimer, I kind of suck at it. I haven't practiced it that much because I don't really use it that much online, but I'll try here. Oops. Oh, whoa, whoa, what was that frame drop? But basically, if you call out a support like Gakugo or Jiro at the same time... Oh, I nearly got it there. You can easily combo into your plus ultra. There we go. I messed up the combo, but you're gonna get 18,000 or something. Like that. It's pretty good, and make sure you have a support for that. And I'm sorry to cut this short, I think he's really complicated, but I think I covered it really quickly. You have to make sure you have your orbs out, make sure you're ready for your resets, use your red attack, know when you can get extended meterless damage. So this high damage combos, make your orb out. If you want, make sure you charge your orb so that you can get combos easily that way. Do lots of damage. Um, if you have your charged orb, then that's when you can get the most damage out of your plus ultra too. And here we go. And guys, I'm sorry, but I think... Oh, no, 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 no. I have more to say, I have more to say. There we go, 16,000, pretty easy. Big chunk of damage. Um, I almost forgot about how his combo changed when he's in the charged mode, which is a whole extra part of Kaminari. So if I do two hits, no, 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 three hits, into his Tilt Quark 2, I can dash cancel, armor move, Tilt Quark 2, Quark 2, and I've gotten an easy 11,000 damage. If I want to do a plus ultra, I'll do three hits, into his um, Tilt Quark 2, and then plus ultra. And then I'm in game mode, you make sure you can protect yourself with supports or whatever. Because it's not fun getting full comboed by your opponent. Usually I wait for them to hit me, like hit, hit me with one attack and then call out my support, just to make sure they don't actually block it and then I end up getting hit by a full combo anyways. But yeah, when he's in game mode, you basically... Oh, oops. You can essentially do the same thing. Do this. Quirk 2, dash cancel. Into these again, make sure you have them on the screen, or if you want to just go for full damage, end in Quirk 2. So I'll show you again. Two hits, Quirk 1. Oh, didn't work. Oh, and I'm in yay mode. Let me just charge up again. Okay, so two hits. Into... Okay, that's not that consistent, apparently. A lot of the time it stuns the opponent. Maybe I have to have it charged? Oh yeah, there we go. Into Tilt Quark 2. And then, oh god, you get I showed it before, but yeah. Three attacks. Into Tilt Quark 2, dash cancel, and then do the same combo you did in the regular mode. Oh, that's not even full damage. And there you go, you can get an easy 12,000 damage into a Meteor Blow, and hopefully that gives you time to go into Yay mode, and they can't punish you. No guarantees though, you're in there for quite a while. That was for one dash cancel, practically 12,000 damage, that's really good. 
So when you're in the charge mode, in any level of charge, like whether he has the blue charge, whether he's really close or whatever, he can get that out. Failing to charge up anymore. But yeah, basically no matter what charge you'll be able to get that high damage combo. The more charged up you are, the more damage it's going to do because the more hits your attack do. When Come on. What the hell? And now I'm yeted. But yeah, easy 12,000. Sometimes it can even go to 15,000 the more charged he is. And if you go into a plus ultra combo, you can get easily plus easily like 18,000 damage. And yes, now I think I'm done talking about Kaminari's combos. If you have your, his charged thing, it can get above average damage, including going into a reset or a setup. Easy damage into um, s uh, setups or resets in this game are really strong. If you do the reset, you're easily going to get 20,000 damage. I mean, maybe not 20,000, but like. Uh, yeah, I'd say 20,000 if you get the proper reset and then go into this in the air and then go into some like crazy damage from the air, you're easily going to get like about 20,000 damage if you uh, do a full combo or you can go into a setup which allows you to go for easier full combos and do more damage because you can do more extensions on the ground essentially he's just really good, you just have to choose what you do, plan your attack and then just go crazy when you're in the, in the charged mode you can go crazy do lots of lock pressure because you have so many attacks in every button. Yeah, he's really strong in the yay mode. His block pressure is actually let me get out of it. charge mode. His block pressure is actually really good at um coming out because he has his safe quirk one. So you can basically end anything in that, and then you're safe. So I can do three hits into this into this, into quirk 1, and I was safe the whole time. Obviously there's some gaps in there, if you want to sidestep or do whatever, but that's where you can put in different things at different times. If I do attack into this, they can't sidestep because the charge afterwards will punish the sidestep. So we, yeah, so a lot of the time I actually just do this into that, and then I'm safe, and if they try to sidestep after the first hit or something, or I can do two hits into this, and then they sidestep, and then the charge punishes them for trying to attack me afterwards. He's just really good at doing pressure on block, and just make sure you end in the quirk one if they are blocking the whole time, and that will keep you safe. But essentially guys, I'm sorry, but that is my entire Denki Kaminari breakdown. He's really fun to play as, I think he might actually be one of my mains, I didn't expect him to be so complex and technical, but he's really fun to play with all of his setups, his quirk one orbs, his extended combos that you get from his setups, his resets that can catch the opponent so many times online. I'm not joking you, like people just for some reason choose to recover, or then they choose to not recover, and then you can get extended things. But yeah, it's, he, it's really strong, he's very good at controlling what the opponent wants to do, and controlling the screen with his massive, if you set up the balls right, he can make these massive triangles on the screen, and go into full combos if the opponent decides to be an idiot and walk into them. And yeah, that's Kaminari, good damage, good screen control, good zoning, and he has resets. Like, what is there not to love? He can combo off his plus ultra, he has a good red attack, literally every about him thing about him is amazing. I don't understand why people say he's weak. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys! Oh, <laughs> <laughs>